interview. Why you for a face to face interview? Why is it so rare that the public gets to see Eminem nowadays? What's going yeah, on? Why is it like that? I actually need him to make my music so he'd be busy. Yeah, I'm actually like working constantly in the studio, but you know, for, for me to be able to create the songs and, 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 and do what I've been doing, like to the rare performances that I do get to do, you know, it's like I enjoy them so much because that's at the end of the day, that's one of the reasons that you create music for, you know? Yeah, the Welcome back to 106 Park. Right now, it is all about the man right here to my side. Eminem is in the building, and that was a clip from the last time you were here on 106. Tell us what comes across your mind when you see that. Kids don't do drugs. <laughs> were you were you in on yeah, drugs? What were was you? going on at that time? Yes, I was just a little wee bit under the influence on that uh, on that particular clip. Well, one thing for sure is we're glad that you can even discuss it so openly because that by itself is something personal and you're able to open up to your fans about the addiction. Yeah. Tell us about that dark period in your life. Well, the crazy part about that clip, and I don't know if people believe me when I say this, but I don't remember being here. Like, I literally have no recollection of actually doing the show. I remember going home and watching it, but I just don't remember being here. But that's kind of like at that point, at that particular time is kind of where I was at. So, How do you think things got so bad for you? I don't know. I mean, if I had to like try to mark a time period or whatever and try to figure out like where it actually went, I, I, I can't, it, it's hard for me to try to figure out where it went from recreation to a full blown problem, you know, but um, I mean, I think that it was a problem when I went to rehab in 2005 and, you know, I came out and I, I wasn't really taking rehab serious and I came out, I relapsed and then, you know, the proof thing happened and then I kind of just went way overboard. Yeah, I just kind of lost it how would you describe yourself as a person while you were on the drugs and how do you describe the relationship you had with other people from your family your friends even your label mates well I was I was extremely um, distant you know I didn't really talk to nobody I, I, I kind of just went off and just did my own thing you know what I mean I'd, I'd go home and shut the door or I'd just go off into a bathroom somewhere and, you know pop a couple of pills and then be okay and then you but you know i was a, i was a functioning addict so i was kind of the worst an addict of the worst kind so nobody really knew what was going on i think just people around me saw like something ain't right you know what i mean when we talk about the people that are around you we know that you dr dre and 50 cent are really close friends and they're also your business partners what, what were they what was their whole perception of what was going on with you did they know that you had an addiction problem or i think that um you know, when, when I ask, when I, when I talk to 50 and Dre about it, I think that they just, they, they felt like something wasn't right, but they didn't quite know at that time. You know what I mean? I, I just, I hit it really well, so. Was it kind of, because I'm sure that must have been hard for them to kind of even approach you on that, because that's something different. Yeah, I don't think anybody would have actually said anything at, at that point in time anyways, and I don't think anybody really could, you know? It was kind of a thing that I had to come to the realization of. So. Well, you've been clean for a year, and that by itself is an accomplishment. Congratulations on that. How did it take you to get to that point, and what did it take for you to ultimately get to that point where you said, I'm clean, I'm getting clean? Well, I had a, a pretty uh, pretty bad experience, like uh, not last Christmas, but the Christmas before. And, you know, I, when I did the Vibe article, I kind of just came out and told everything, but I actually overdosed on methadone, which I didn't even know what I was taking at the time. I didn't know it was methadone had a near-death experience where I literally almost died and then um, uh, came out the hospital and about a month later relapsed again and that's how I knew like this is a disease you know what I mean this isn't like this is not nothing to do with willpower like willpower is like I don't want that piece of cake over there you know what I mean so I'm not gonna eat it this is a different thing and I had to come to the realization that you know when, when I was ready to face it like I'm an addict you know what I mean? Then, you know, I, and I was ready to get clean. I think that it was, it was overall, it was like the overdose. And then when I relapsed, I kind of shot back up to the same point with the drugs that I was already at. And it just scared me. So I just went to some friends who was just like, yo, I, I, I got a problem. I need help. Who were those friends? Well, I'm not going to say who those friends were. It was just people in my circle. You know what I mean? Just people that I trust. But my name is Marshall. I'm an addict. I don't know at what point exactly it started to be a problem. I just remember... 
liking it more and more. People tried to tell me that I had a problem. I would say, get that fucking person out of here. I can't believe they said that shit to me. They know nothing about my fucking life. Are they out of fucking mind? So I got introduced to Ambien on, on the set of 8 Mile, and I got into the habit of taking it every single night. By the time the movie was wrapped, went on tour. Now I need it every night after a show. You know what I mean? And then it got to where I became dependent on the sleep medications. And then there was like a, it's a real blurry line, like if I actually had a problem with alcohol or I didn't. And I think that if I never had drugs, to, like if I never had pills to fall back on, I would have had a full blown... You know, I'd have been a full-blown alcoholic. Once I took my first bike and it was just like this feeling of, ah, you know, like everything was not only mellow, but didn't feel any pain. It just didn't, it just kind of numb thing. It took me a, 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 a while to actually admit, you know, that I had a problem. I mean, you know, in the hip hop world that I live in, I think that it could be mistaken for weakness. And the last thing you want to do in hip hop is admit that you're weak. I can take it, you know, today, and maybe tomorrow I won't. I'm not out there shooting hair. When I'm not out there fucking, you know, putting coke up my nose, I'm not smoking crack. You're struggling with the argument of, do you have a problem or do you not have a problem? Can you control it or can you not? And I literally thought I could control it. And for one out of 10 people, this is how easy it is to fall into the hands of addiction. Once you're addicted, the drugs become interchangeable. You're taking things that people are giving you that you don't even know what the fuck they are. They look like a pill, and they look, they're shaped like something that you take, so you take it, you know? Xanax, Valium, tomato, tomato. You know what I mean? It's the, the same thing. It's all in the same family, fuck it, take it. I overdosed and, and almost died. My organs were shutting down. My liver, kidneys, everything, they were gonna have to put me on dialysis. They didn't think I was gonna make it. Had I got to the hospital about two hours later, I would have died. Um, well, I had to admit that I had a problem. Mm -hmm. I had to, um, I think I had to, to, I had to be ready for myself. Like, I had to be ready for me. I know that it's, you know, I don't mean to make it sound cliche, but you have to do it for yourself. You know, you can't do it for other people. And I think that when I went to rehab the first time back in, I think, 2005, mm -hmm. I felt like I was doing it for other people. I wasn't doing it for me. So I kind of went in, fought the system, didn't really want to listen to what anybody had to say about it, and I felt like, well, I don't have a problem like these people, you know. I, you know, I, I'm, I, I just take this because I just take these pills because I, I, I can't sleep. I have a sleeping problem. My bottom was gonna be death. Within a month, I had relapsed and shot right back up to the same amount of pills that I was taking. I remember just walking around my house and thinking every single day, like, I'm gonna fucking die. You know, then I, I went through a. Uh, a really rough period after I came home from rehab and, and I um, lost my best friend and kind of uh, the reins were off. It was kind of just like, you know, screw it. This is like, you know, and like I'm, I'm looking at my kids and I need to be here for this. Coming off of everything, I literally was up 24 hours a day for three weeks straight. And I mean, not sleeping, not even nodding off for a, a fucking minute. Like, I was literally just up, like... And it, from, from there, I really went downhill. And that's when I overdosed, got out the hospital, relapsed a short time after that, basically uh, scared the out of myself, and um, went to some people and was like, yo, I got a problem, I need help, I can't beat this on my own. Because the whole time, I, was, I think I was thinking that I could, but I couldn't. I had to regain motor skills. I had to regain talking skills. It's been a, a, a learning process. Like, it's been... I'm growing. I just couldn't believe that anybody could ever be naturally happy or naturally function or be just enjoying life in general without being on something. So I would say that to, to anybody that it, it does get better, you know, it just, it does.